From Wall Street to Main Street, this is LA Late. It's a big night of evenings, LA Late, as the push for your reoccurring monthly fourth stimulus checks heats up. We have new clarity about the fifth stimulus package and a major push to reform SSI, SSDI, Social Security, railroad benefits, and veterans benefits with a new benchmark, increased monthly benefits, and more. Meantime, throughout the day and yesterday, and no different to what happened several weeks ago, we got a counterproposal from the Republicans. It signals that the bill, the fourth stimulus package, has to go by reconciliation. Also, we have insight as to what's coming happening in September with SSI reform, how big money could be coming to you in another form after these monthly stimulus checks. For now, the push is underway to get these monthly stimulus checks going by a reconciliation bill. In this recording, I'm gonna go over the fourth stimulus package, I'm going to go over the amount of money at issue. I'm going to go over the path to get these stimulus checks done, the timing. And then I'm going to go over the standalone bills that have been heating up, student loan debt forgiveness, the remainder of third stimulus items like business grants. Also, the other items that have been standing alone in the Senate, like the Ron Wyden new plan to pay you $6,000 of big money as PUA expires in just a few weeks. And I go over the incredible great news about SSI and SSDI reform and other items are being pushed to put in the fifth stimulus package this September. There's a lot of breaking news and I have a lot of details to go over. It's a big night of Evenings LA and I'm so excited for you to be here from across the land. Whether it's third stimulus, fourth stimulus, or soon fifth stimulus, I have all the details for you tonight as we get to the details of what's happening, whether it's crypto, whether it's the economy or whether it's your pocketbook, this is Evening's Ally. Good evening, everybody. It's a big night of evenings in LA, and I'm so excited you're here as I have big updates for you for those four stimulus checks, those monthly stimulus checks, and what's happening for fifth stimulus. It all impacts everything across the board. How are you? I hope you're having a beautiful night. I'm so excited you are here. If you've not subscribed, make sure you subscribe. Also, like this video, and if you've not become a member, consider becoming a member. Purple Hawk, Purple Power, Calcino VIP. First, we're approaching our one-year anniversary in just a few days. April 25th. So thank you for bringing us to 394,000 subscribers, I think it is. We're just a few thousand away to getting to 400,000. Let's get there. Second, for those that had became members, you saw the Elizabeth Warren uh, letter yesterday. You saw the new Romney plan bill yesterday. And you also saw the big new letters and bills that were introduced yesterday that impact your SSI and SSDI. So consider becoming a member if you're not. Let's get to the breaking news. The breaking news to start is that the president is really actually where he was no less than three weeks ago. Why? Because the Republicans did come in with what could call a, a formal counteroffer. offer. But if you've been with me for a few weeks, you have seen that their counter offers verbally or formally have been about the same. It hasn't changed. Three weeks ago, I told you that Roy Blount, who is the uh, senator from Missouri, who's set to retire, said that as the number one senator among Republicans for transportation, he would do a bill that has $600, $800 billion of infrastructure, but wouldn't give any money for climate and would actually reduce the amount of the infrastructure the president's proposing and also not call for any changes to the tax code. The president at the time, three weeks ago, said, I'm not doing that. You have to give me money for climate. So yesterday, and the day before, you've seen some of the videos where the president had two people in the room, no joke, three people in the room from the Republicans caucus to negotiate about the stimulus package. Here's what I told you. It was phone negotiations. And I was right, because this is a new political report released today. During, that, during those meetings, what did the Republicans do? They basically repeated what they had said over the last three weeks. Here was the formal counteroffer, $600, $800 billion 
total. President wants $2.2 trillion. President not only rejected it, he said, I'm not even accepting that as a formal offer. Come back with me with another offer. It shows that these faux negotiations are not going anywhere and that the president at some point, if he doesn't realize already, that these aren't anything that's going to happen. What's important to understand is that stimulus checks, monthly stimulus checks for you have to go by reconciliation. You want reconciliation. The president is not going to get $2 trillion from the Republicans. They've said it for three weeks. Number two, they're not going to get, he's not going to get a penny for climate. They said that for three weeks. And yet again, they said yesterday, and again today, they're not even giving him the full amount of money he wants for infrastructure. They're giving him 600 to $800 billion for infrastructure. What's important to understand is that the president has done an optics for whatever purpose it is to see that the bill would go by potentially a reconciliation uh, by a bipartisan effort. But the Republicans haven't moved. Uh, the latest detail is that during those negotiations, number one GOP leader for environmental public works, Shelley Moore Capito, who actually I detailed, I believe, on Monday and Sunday as well, who's a Republican out of West Virginia, said that she would do $600, $800 billion dollars. Uh, and that she saw that the plan should really almost be somewhere between 500 to 800 total. The president wants 2.2. The president was so unhappy with that, he reportedly told them um, don't, he's not even going to accept that as a counteroffer to come back with him with another counteroffer. Now, I tell you good news and I tell you bad news. And what I'm about to tell you is not particularly bad news, but it's also troubling news. Uh, this report from Politico, which is not anyone on the record, it's not a direct quote from the president. It's not a quote from the press secretary. Says that the president told Capito to come back with another counteroffer by mid-May. Yeah, those two words, mid-May. Oh, hell no. <laughs> Can you just drop it in the comments? I, I'm, I'm probably in the live chat with you right now. Uh, yeah, just hell no. <laughs> We are not waiting to mid-May for a counter-offer. They've already said $600, $800 billion for uh, four weeks. What are we going to do? Wait another four weeks to still say, okay, instead of $600, $800 billion, it'll be $825 billion, $811 billion and 22 cents. No, it's time to start reconciliation, Mr. President. The reconciliation process is a two-month process at least. And viewers have been asking me, LA, like, how long does it take this reconciliation? Here's what you need to know. I'm not a legislator. I don't write bills, <laughs> although I did to write that one last year. Uh, but I have seen how long it took third stimulus with you. And third stimulus, which went by reconciliation, was not a long bill. It was 300 pages long compared to the first stimulus package, which was 3,000 pages long. So why was the second, why was the third stimulus package bill so small? Because it was not new stuff. It was revising prior language of prior bills with maybe a few other pages added in there. It was not particularly new stuff. In fact, the stimulus check section just said, sent out another round of stimulus checks, reference previous bill, done next paragraph. It was that simple. So when you're talking about bridges, highways, roads, water, infrastructure, internet, and changing the tax code. It's not going to be 300 pages. It's going to be thousands of pages. They need to start this sooner rather than later. While the third stimulus package I detailed to you on this channel took two months to do, could, third, could four stimulus take two months to do? Yes. Could it take less than two months? I don't think so. I'm not an expert on this, but I don't think it could be done in less than two months. So the notion of waiting to mid-May is just sort of ridiculous. Uh, get it going. <laughs> get it going. Here's what you need to know is that those congressional leaders, they control the universe of where laws are done. And here's what you need to understand. I don't think I've made this very clear in recent recordings, is that while the president wants to do infrastructure and the progressives want you to have a monthly stimulus check and the House and the senators want you to have monthly stimulus checks. There are other senators out there, Democrats, and other senators and other House members out there, Democrats, who want to do some other stuff, which I don't cover in this recordings because I don't know what they are yet. They want to do other things. For example, they may want to do minimum wage. So they're ready to get this bill going to reconciliation. They want to pile in their other stuff. Rather than write standalone bills, which they can do, and I'm going to detail some of those in this recording, 
They rather just slide things as add-ons into a big stimulus package. It's easier. If you were with me in December and January, you saw how Nancy Pelosi would add in just extra stuff like money to foreign countries and new bridges and uh, building a new building here, a new highway. They like to slide things in rather than getting a standalone bill because they know the standalone bill is not going to pass. Well, guess what? They're, they are even more anxious to get this done than you and I are. They are certainly making it very clear to the president, reconciliation needs to start. And with that, let's look at the big graphic about the reconciliation process and what's at issue here. First, the amount of the stimulus checks, House members want to give you a stimulus check every month for the rest of this pandemic, and then one year thereafter. So they want to give you a lot of months upwards of 18 months of stimulus checks. The senators want to give you stimulus checks between now and December. But more about that in a second. The House members are more junior members of Congress, and the senators are more senior members of Congress. And one of the things I've not said in this recording before, in this, in this channel before, is look at this graphic. The senators are also members of Congress who have themselves a lot of standalone bills and a lot of standalone issues they want to add in. So I think that's sort of important for purposes of getting recon done quicker. And how much is the monthly check? Well, the House members want to pay $2,000 the first month, $1,000 thereafter. The senators, the amount is unknown, but word on the street is it looks like this. It looks like this, $2,000 a month, which would be over six months, $12,000. This is an individual. Or $1,400 a month over six months would be $8,400. This is an individual. This would be the single biggest payout you have seen on this channel. And before you pause and say, but that just looks like a lot of money. In 2020, no one wanted to give us this money. This is not 2020. And before you pass judgment on the magnitude and the size and the enormous amount of those monthly stimulus checks, I want you to see this provision about what's happening next. Uh, the next provision is fifth stimulus. Oh, do I have the graphic here? Maybe I do. Maybe I don't. Um, fifth stimulus. Oh, I don't have the graphic here. So the next, the next graphic I want to show you was fifth stimulus. The president proposes in September fifth stimulus. And under fifth stimulus, he wants to spend $1 trillion, which would involve, are you ready for this? $300 a month for children 17 or younger, for five more years. So they would get six years of thir of 30, excuse me, six years of $300 a month. So $300 a month over 12 months is $3,600 times six years. Yeah, that's not 20,000. That is a lot of money. He wants to give them a enormous amount of money, $40,000, $50,000. So when we're talking about your monthly stimulus checks, under fourth stimulus, before we can even get to fifth stimulus, do not fret and think this looks like a lot of money. It's not in the context of the money that the president himself wants to spend. Now, here's what you need to know, is that ultimately, this money needs to start, and it needs to start soon. There's a couple things in this graphic that are important. First, July. Obviously, every month that this takes, you miss a stimulus check. Number two, viewers have asked me if they sign this into law or they call this for a vote, when would the check start? Let me make that very clear. Leader Pelosi, Speaker, uh, Speaker, excuse me, Speaker Pelosi, Leader Schumer have said the vote would be by July. In fact, in fact, they say July 4th. That would mean that the first round of checks would go out within about five to 10 days. And that means your first stimulus check would be a July month check. You would, there would literally be a July month check. You may get it in the month, in the early part of July, in the middle of the July, in late July, but there would be a July month check. It's, it's how checks come from the federal government. Perhaps your December check comes a little bit late and comes first week of January, but there would be a July month check. Also, viewers have been asking me, how would I physically receive it? In 2020, Warren and Sanders have proposed something like this, and I think they would likely go around this route because it's a cheaper alternative. The federal government would likely send you, or potentially, not likely, potentially send you a debit card instead of a paper check, instead of a direct deposit, a debit card that would have the first, that would have um, nothing on it. And then in just two weeks uh, or in a few days, the first month's deposit would appear on it. And then the next month. And so it just replenished with money 
week after week after week, well, month after month after month. So you wouldn't have to look for a direct deposit. You wouldn't, they wouldn't have to send out things, mail things. It's just cheap on the federal government and easy on you. Here's what you also need to know, is that the president's optics are going to go astray tomorrow and Friday. Why? Because tomorrow and Friday are climate days. The president's going to hold a series of major climate conferences, and those major climate conferences may involve executive orders. And more importantly, what they're going to detail is that he is unwilling to move one penny on climate for Republicans who are unwilling to give one penny for climate under the fourth stimulus package. Away we go right into reconciliation. Remember, the president is not going to put stimulus checks in the fourth stimulus. He's not even going to write the bill. The speaker is going to write the bill with her House subcommittees. They're going to put the stimulus checks in there, or the senators are going to put the stimulus checks in there. He's not opposed to it, the president of the United States. He's absolutely not opposed to it, but he's not going to actually write the bill, and he's actually not going to talk about stimulus checks. He's going to talk about infrastructure and jobs and climate. And, of course, taxes as well. <laughs> Meantime, a political report on Saturday says the president has not even decided what taxes he wants to modify under the tax code to pay for this and how much of this plan would be paid for. What's important to understand that the whole plan will not be paid for 100% by a tax change to the tax code. That's the first thing. The second thing is the president hasn't even decided what taxes he wants to change. This also makes viewers a little bit unsettled because modifying tax code is a hard element. It's not a it's a hard task. It's not an easy task. Not that it's contentious. It's actually a difficult task. So it's not like, you know, <laughs> I give twenty million dollars to a San Francisco hairstyles. Yeah, it's that's an inch, inch easy line. You just put in one sentence. Modifying the tax code is a little bit harder. And what does that mean? It means it gets get started sooner than later. Meantime, coming up later in this recording, I'm going to go over the real big excitement of the SSI, SSDI reform. I will be explaining to you what this big reform is, who it's coming from, and where it's going to land, fifth stimulus, and how it impacts you, and how it compares to the $2,400 that viewers sometimes ask me about. Where would that potentially land, or will it? And I'll compound that with coverage of that new letter from Elizabeth Warren, which members of this channel have, that talks about the wealth tax, which pays for $2,400. Then I'll circle back. <laughs> we have a range of issues to cover tonight. Uh, I will circle back to cover, <laughs> yeah, I'm not wearing teal, uh, to then cover uh, the discussion of student loan debt forgiveness, uh, the $6,000 from uh, Ron Wyan. And the other standalone bills that are heating up across the board. It's a big night of Evening's LA, and we're just getting started, so stay with me. I'll have a little bit of that and more, and the debut of a jaw-dropping new Cadillac. I almost said it the other way. <clears throat> In about 60 seconds. Stay with me. I'll be back with you just after this commercial break. If you want money right now, not five days from now, and not five weeks from now, then reach out to the community page. The volunteers can help you find that money for rent and utilities. That's at news.la.com forward slash community. The community page features a series of volunteers who are viewers like you. They can help you find rent, utilities, SNAP, food benefits, mortgage assistance, and help you with eviction moratorium questions as well. Their Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram individuals reach out to them and indicate the city and state you're from, and they'll get back to you shortly. That's a community page. Volunteers working for you, viewers helping one another. Stay with LA for more. Join LA Late Daily for the excitement of the new LA Late Live Daily. The excitement starts on mornings LA Late at 9 a.m. LLA returns at 11 a.m. daily. And then afternoons LLA at 1 p.m. Join us daily as the excitement continues live from Santa Monica on LLA. And the excitement continues in just a few minutes from now as LA Late Night heats up in about two hours. 
LA Late Night is our irreverent, non-informational show, which comes out in two hours from now at 8 p.m. at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time here on LA Late. Remember, LA Late Night is not an informational show. It is a humor-only broadcast. So this is your final big informational show of the night. Thank you for joining me on a big evening to LA. If you've not subscribed, make sure you subscribe. Also, like this video. And if you've not become a member, consider becoming a member. Purple Hawk, Purple Power, or Calcino VIP. I'm in the live chat, so say hi, hi, how are you? In this recording, I still have a lot to cover, and I'm getting to it right now. Starting with that SSI, SSDI reform, four stimulus checks, those monthly stimulus checks, student loan debt forgiveness, and more. Well, first, let's circle back. <laughs> uh, now she's doing it to me. Circle back with the range of issues I have, the range of topics I have to cover. Let's circle <laughs> back now to force stimulus. And the big push that you need to do, Purple Power, is really getting this to reconciliation. The single most important push that needs to be happening is the start of the reconciliation process. The reconciliation process is the process that takes upwards of two months. The bill that would th provide you these monthly stimulus checks can only go by recon and that it can either happen when the House puts it in there or the Senate puts it in there by Votorama. But because it's a two-month path, we cannot wait to mid-May or even later because guess what? July 5th, approximately, is when these congressional leaders start to take vacations. You have to have this bill done in July. You have to have this bill called for a final vote in July and finalized so that the stimulus checks go out in July. Why? Because they're gone to September. Now let's cut over the big exciting news about SSI and SSDI reform. Oh boy, this is really exciting. First, let me explain to you where it would be. It would be in September, number one. Number two, it would be in what's going to be called the, the fifth stimulus package. The president's going to refer to it as the America Family Plan, the AFP. The fourth stimulus, by contrast, is also called the Infrastructure Bill or the American Job Plan. The fifth stimulus would have this incredible add-on from the Democrats that would provide for uh, a lot of incredible relief starting with SSI benefit reforms. Let's go over what type of SSI benefit reforms they're proposing. First, they're proposing to increase your benefit levels so you would get more money per month. They're basically saying that your current benefit levels are tagged to where this economy was in 1984 and that the entire universe of your benefits right now need to be lifted up over 100% raise from where you are. Yes, you're listening. You are. You did hear me right. They're proposing to raise your current benefits from where they are nearly a hundred percent just to start. Then they want every December an inflation benchmark, not COLA, to determine how much to increase your benefits every year. Next year, for example, the inflation estimates are 2 to 4% for the U.S. economy. So that would mean you would be raised 100% to start to bring you up to current levels. And then at the end of this year, if we see the 2 to 4% next year, then they would raise your benefits another 2 to 4%. Third, they want, to, they want to increase your asset limits so that you could hold more money in hand and not be disqualified. Then... They want to remove the income exclusion exclusion currently on the books. The income exclusion says you can't work more than a certain amount of money per year. They want to literally wipe it away, and they say they dates back to 1963, and they also want to remove the marriage penalty. Basically, to summarize the mindset and the details, it's an incredible, incredible turnaround of money. First, they want to raise you all up. 100 plus percent. Then at the end of the year, they want to have a new benchmark every year. That benchmark would be tied to inflation. Inflation is always 2, 3 percent. Uh, inflation is never zero. It's always something. It's always 2 to 4. It's not 10 percent or 20 percent. Yeah, you're going to be f very freaking out if the inflation is 20 percent. Uh, it's usually 2 to 3 percent. So you would know generally your benefits would increase about 2 to 3 percent every year. Very, very easy. Then they want to allow you to hold more cash on hand. And then they want to be able to go work if you do want to work and not fall off of benefits. It's absolutely incredible. They want that in the fifth stimulus package. And they wrote a letter to the president yesterday uh, signed by dozens and dozens of congressional leaders, including the same ones who want to give you those stimulus checks. 
Let's turn to Ron Wyden. He is among the people who signed that letter, which I just detailed. He has another bill, his bill. He has introduced the Senate, which would provide $6,000, a stimulus, separate and apart from everything else I just covered. It would be for my PUA people who are going off benefits in September, because a lot of these benefits are expiring in September. PUC, FPUC, PUA. Concept's very simple. If you're a PUA person at any time, now, any time into the future, it's, a not, it's not a program that will expire. The federal government would pay you $250 a week for up to six months, which is $6,000, for anyone that's impacted because of work for, as a PUA type person, independent contractor. Great bill. Again, that's in the Senate. Next, let's go to Elizabeth Warren's bills. She has a couple of them. <laughs> First one is the incredible student loan debt forgiveness bill. That student loan debt forgiveness bill, bill, and I'm saying that very emphatically, bill in the Senate, she's not focusing so much on, rather on the executive order for student loan debt forgiveness. Chuck Schumer, Elizabeth Warren, won a major decision two weeks ago with this president to have him have his education secretary, Miguel Cardona, prepare a memo about whether the president can forgive student loan debt by executive order. Obama has done it. Trump has done it. So what happened? No one knows. The letter was due last Friday, and I haven't heard from Warren. Maybe, perhaps you've heard it. I have not heard. I've not heard from Warren. I did hear from Schumer, I think, that he was not happy that this memo has not been produced. So it's now about three, four, five days late. We're going to stay on top of the story. I'm watching the story like a hawk for you as well. Then the next Elizabeth Warren bill to cut over to is the incredible wealth tax. That wealth tax bill was introduced to this channel uh, I think it was almost two months ago, three months ago, in late January, Elizabeth Warren did what she had promised while campaigning for president. While campaigning for president, she proposed three things for SSI reform. Number one, changing the benchmark. Well, you just heard in that, just heard in this recording about a minute before this, that that letter now proposes to change the benchmark, tying it to inflation. Check that one off the list. Number two, she wanted to raise everyone's benefits because she thinks they're undervalued based upon old economic numbers and old, old data. Check that one off the list. The, that, that letter proposes to do the same, to raise anyone, everyone off of these 1984 numbers and bring them up to the present at 100% increase. So what is left? The $2,400 or $200 a month for the pandemic. Will that still happen? Hard to say. I want you to know that if you're on SSI and SSDI, the biggest push you should have is for multiple stimulus checks because it's eight, nine, ten, twelve thousand dollars $12,000. It's not $2,400. And $2,400 was when we started in January. It's now April. So it's not, you know, $1,000. It's eight, nine, ten thousand dollars $10,000. You want to get behind MSC and it would not qualify as income. It does not trigger your benefits exclusions or anything like that. It's purely um, a gift from the federal government. It's not tax. But there's great news because Elizabeth Warren wrote a letter to Leon Cooperman two days ago asking him to come to Congress next Tuesday, April 27th, to debate with her the wealth tax. Well, we finally have an answer. He's not coming. He is not coming. No surprise about that. But the letter's incredible because she's pushing still for the wealth tax, which would fund the $2,400 of SSI, or fund anything for SSI, which is really important. During the campaign for president, she was asked, how are you going to pay for all this? She said, I'll have a wealth tax bill. And she does. <laughs> and she introduced it. So if you're trying to keep track of all the standalone bills from Elizabeth Warren, there's the wealth tax bill. There is the student loan debt forgiveness bill. And then there are all the letters that she is a part of. She is a part of the very big SSI reform letter. And a lot of other things have been detailed on this channel. Meantime, what's going on with the business grants? The Shuttered Venue Grant, I don't see it yet live. I'm going to check again uh, tonight. But the Shuttered Venue Grant at SBA has been closed since its operation because they're not getting, they, they're admitting they're having computer problems. The EIDL grant for existing business from 2020 that applied, they are paying those out. So watch for those invites. If you applied in February, there is a vortex. February respondents are stuck in a vortex. But congratulations to my viewers who have got to the main of that $10,000 grant. Third, the restaurant grant's about to go live, and the $5,000 grant that was supposed to go live under the law of the, of the, of the third stimulus has not gone live yet. So a lot of details to look at. 
Meantime, some other fun news and interesting news. The first one is, <laughs> is this. Wow. What is that? It's a Cadillac, or as Sir Lauren would say, Cadillac. Uh, it's incredible. It's the latest electric debut from GM. This is a Cadillac. And why it's important for you to know about its debut is it was introduced today with these images with an announcement by Cadillac that the car company will be 100% electric by 2030 at least, if not earlier. GM is about three to four years later. They are one of several t companies that are now saying they're going to be fully electric, whether it's Volvo or everyone else, that are saying they are moving away from gasoline-powered vehicles. There may be no more gasoline-powered vehicles in the United States in less than 10 years. It signals a major churn of our economy. And it is, is a big issue for purposes of climate and the forced stimulus because the president's talking about charging stations. If there's no electric, if there's only electric cars in this country, guess what? You absolutely have to have charging stations on all interstates across the country. You have to have it. You can't drive from here to New York in an electric car, at least not now. You give it a few years. They're changing the batteries very quickly. Also, a really surprising update to another story. Uh, if you were with me on Sunday, I was just dumbfounded when this happened. On Sunday, a series of English, Spanish, and Italian teams announced that they were breaking away to form what was going to be called the Super League. Well, in less than 24 hours, between Sunday and Tuesday, it has literally collapsed. All the English teams have now pulled out. Manchester United, Manchester City, Liverpool, Tottenham, Chelsea, and Arsenal have yanked out. And there's reports that the Italian teams may yank as well. The... German and French teams never join. What's interesting about today's news, though, is that foreign critics are saying, why is Boris, Yel uh, why is Boris Johnson, uh, the head, you know, the, the PM of England, reacting to the news about soccer teams faster than what he reacted to the news about COVID? Yeah, it's sometimes politicians react to sports news faster than economic news and health news. Um, he's under criticism for that. Uh, some of the comments were, if only the government's response to the pandemic has been as fast as his response to the football crisis, we might have been in a different position, said an advisor to the independent group, SAG Group. <laughs> there we go. If you've not subscribed, make sure you subscribe. Approaching our one-year anniversary in just a few days. I'd love for you to become part of this family, and we have a lot of great times together. Also, like this video. Let's try to do two, 3,000 likes. And if you've not become a member, consider becoming a member so you get all these incredible PDFs, the new, oh, I didn't even cover it. Um, there is that new Romney plan. I didn't cover it because I don't think the Romney plan is ever going to be called for a vote by um, Leader Schumer. The Romney plan is a counterproposal to SSI reform. It's not particularly good. The reason why I want you to see it is because the co-signers of the, of the bill, which is actually a former bill from a previous year we introduced, are Joe Manchin and Kristen Sinema. Yeah, I, I'm not particularly fond of their co-signing that bill, um, specifically because it cuts your benefits. But uh, if you're a member, you'll get a copy of that bill as well. And with that, join me in two hours from now as our irreverent, humor only, no information at all broadcast kicks up its feet and hooves as LA Late Night returns. Stay informed, stay focused, and see you LA.